Hi guys, it's uh, the Fasting Atheist. <laughs> I'll say that again, it's the Fasting Atheist, not the Fasting Atheist. Um, and it's day three of my complete fast, and this is going to be a brief update. Day three is um, pretty significant for the long faster because it's around then that the body switches over to ketosis. I'm running a bit rough today, but that's to be expected. What I liken it to is back in the old days when uh, the first cars were introduced that were dual fuel, and they had, this is for my American, <laughs> my many uh, American viewers, um, that's to say a, a vehicle that ran on both LPG and liquid petroleum. Here in Australia, we just say petrol and gas. And anyway, in the early versions of those vehicles, when you switched over from one tank to the other, the vehicle would run a bit rough and for a few strokes, and even some of the pistons would stop, I guess, and you know, you get a bit of a shudder in the vehicle. Uh, that's what I like in the experience of the body switching from glucose to uh, uh, ketone bodies. Of course there's still a little bit of glucose there um, and that's a technical thing which someone pulled me up on the other day but uh, that soon um, dries up and very shortly after ketosis starts within about three or four days I think um, the liver is the, the, the system is stripping the body of fat and the liver is converting it into uh, a form that is uh, assimilable by the brain and by the vital organs. That should do it for that point. I've got to it now and I've, I've made explanations. I've left notes in the earlier two videos. Um, so there's no need to labour that. Um, I forgot to put my timer on, so I think I'll go a couple more minutes and leave it at that for today. Uh, the experience is a bit like you, you get a slightly um, uh, plucky tongue. I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't. But it goes white. A kind of a film film of white um, and this is a sign that the body is excreting um, uh, basically a lower grade fuel than the glucose and um, you know people call it toxins it's not toxins <laughs> there's a whole lot of new age bullshit about you know the ho in fact the whole industry of detoxification is total bullshit. Give you, do yourself a, a favour, um, fasters, potential fasters, and re, uh, read, inform yourself about the science of all the, all of that nonsense, you know, the science debunking all of that nonsense. And it's actually quite a relief, because the industry is just, you know, it's billions and billions of dollars of snake oil. You know, all this colonic uh, detox uh, enemas, you know, where, you, where they these fools in California and here increasingly um, pump 60 or have pumped through them because they can't do it by themselves 60 litres of water through their their um, large colon and their small well I wouldn't make it into the small colon but you know that's an enormous amount and then there, there are some um, uh, disreputable uh, firms who make uh, preparations which are herbal, <laughs> as the Americans say, and all natural, and uh, they they are designed so you, you put them in water and you squirt it up your bum, it goes up into your colon, and then you roll around on your back if you can, or you do a headstand if you can, and very few people can do that. Um, I don't mind um, saying that I'm one of the lucky ones that can because I do Hatha Yoga and that's a plug for Hatha Yoga because there is nothing better that marries itself better no system of exercise that goes quite as sweetly with fasting and I'll talk about that as we go along um, 
Yeah, and that's really handy. You get up on your head. So I do enemas, but they're just plain water. And I don't use distilled water. I use good old chlorinated, um, <laughs> fluoridated water from the tap because I reckon that's good enough. If that's good enough for medical science and for science to have established over the last 50 years that there's nothing wrong with it, that's good enough to go get flushed up my bum. Anyway, getting back to these preparations that are supposed to, and I've got to finish soon. Um, I'll finish on this note, um, which is slightly unsavory. Actually, there's nothing unsavory. Everything in the body is, um, Nothing, nothing is alien to the healthy person who's getting healthy, you know? It's, it's amazing how athletes, yogis, well, I'm not a yogi, but, you know, yoga teachers, uh, people involved in physical culture have a kind of a, um, uh, a, a different kind of modesty when talking about the body. It's not that they're being um, obscene or provocative, it's just that, um, and I'm sure my viewers will understand this, when you... You, you get this familiarity with your bodily processes through through physical fitness. You don't mind talking about things like that. So yeah, this preparation um, is designed to coagulate uh, in in, uh, in the in the bowel, and then you wait and you wait and you wait, and it turns into a kind of jelly substance, and then of course it flushes out, and then the hapless uh, consumer of this uh, snake oil says, "Oh, look at my stool! It's all claggy and full of toxins." Can you believe it? <laughs> really, check it out. Look it up. Uh, look up science debunking detoxification industry. So this is this is another reason, or maybe a, a bit of an insight into why I call myself the fasting atheist. Remember, it could have been the rational faster, but I think that name was already taken. Anyway, um, good luck to you all, and uh, see you um, real soon. Bye.